Hello there! Adrian here, that of the geeks in your on Nerd Rage. And with me here is direct Mark Reyes, director of Botus 5 Legacy. Encantadia and Beep! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so how's that direct Mark? Well, I'm I'm uh, thankful for this opportunity to, to you know get into the meat. I'm glad to have this opportunity to clarify some things. Because I noticed you've been reacting to the reactions in real time. So how, how has it like been for you? Um, it's gratifying uh, that they, they they see things that you know uh, that we dwelled on. Na parang sabi ko na okay, let's for example the the design of uh, Gardo that I said that we must put some logic into it why he looks like that because he's not a beast uh, like the other beast fighters. So I thought the whole butterfly returns, so he looks like a Japanese samurai. So let's put that in the script that he was based on the samurai. You know, it has something that's a, a geeky element that wasn't part of the original story. It was just, pinapakilala ko sa inyo, si Gardo, that's it. Then we took out the supernatural element. If you watch the anime, mm. parang uh, binasbasan kita ng ganyan-ganyan, ng sungay. So it was kind of off for the live action. No? So we took that out. Uh, I gave them all assignments. Because when I watch the anime, the minute that they vault in, they just react to what Steve is doing. I said, this can't be. So I gave them the assignments, you know, so Mark is in second command, and then uh, Big Bird's uh, armory and uh, weaponry, and then engineering is Little John, and then Jamie's communication and uh, medical. So speaking of those, no, parang what led to, to making those additions or changes? No, no, like, like, you know, you gave them different tasks? Or in a big voice activated, pala yung ganun, which, yeah, yo, which yo, is yo. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because yun nga, if you're doing an anime and then they do something kind of acceptable in an animation or in anime in the 70s, and if we just do it, you know, uh, without any rhyme or reason to make it believable in the with the modern audience, it's gonna really look weird. You know, if they shout laser sword for no apparent reason, they just it will look theatrical, it will look, you know. So yun, th that's one of the first conventions I thought of was when I, when we were doing the gimbal scene, just came to me and said, I know what to do, say this uh, for Dr. Smith. And then voice activated, and then when I said to that to the cast, I said, okay, this is the line of Dr. Smith. The weapons are voice activated. And I think it was Ralph or one of them said, cool, we'll put that in. So that's, you saw Lil John say that, diba? yung, yeah. yung cool. Well, I'm a nerd, basically. So I just wanted to put as much as, Easter egg and and you know in my head canon this all these things growing up back it like this back it like that or this ano so I had the opportunity now to with Voltus Five Legacy so I was stuffing it with all those kinds of those information. Let's talk about your journey as 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 a nerd yourself. But what started this journey for you as you know as a lover of all things uh, fantastical and pop culture? Uh, well, it would be for me it would be sci-fi then action then fantasy then. Drama, romance, well, and comedy, that's down the line. Horror is my least favorite thing to watch. No, it's not only because when I watch horror, I, my director in me kicks in. Parang, Paano ginawa yan? Oh, I bet you something's gonna come out in three seconds. From, parang ganon. Anyway, when I was young, it was, you know, with all the toys that I have, and Star Wars came out, Voltus 5, Dimos, all those, ano, that's where I latched on to. So I really enjoyed it. And growing up, there's Star Trek, Stargate, talagang sci fi buff ako. So I'm sure all the sci-fi nerds there would say, Oi, that's from Star Wars. Oi, from Stargate. It's all over Voltus 5 Legacy. I do have a very specific question about the world. So, Filipino ba sila? Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, they so, are. So, the characters yes. were designed to be yes. Filipino. But if you notice, we did not put any culture. Yes. There was no, Horis no Jose Rizal uh, tie-up or any historical. Uh, no. That was by design. Because we wanted to be timeless. So you don't know whether, so when we watch this 20 years from now, okay. there's no reference, so you don't know where, where, where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want it to be as timeless as possible. And then the story doesn't need it. Well, that's coming up, no? That the world leaders, there's an there's international community, but we don't call it as UN, mm -hmm. but, you know, but Earth Defense Force, yung mga ganun. So we try to be as timeless as possible. In announce namin yung middle name ni Dr. Smith, which is the Japanese, uh, counterpart in the Japanese anime because Dr. Smith is part ano siya, ang weird niya he's part Filipino with an American and uh, half Filipino American father ah, mother and a 
Japanese father. Kaya, kaya siya binabawan ko si Simbibing the Japanese culture. Was Juni Gambo ever considered to yes. be in the show? From day one, I wanted him to play Dr. Smith. But go back, no? when we started this, it was 10 years ago that we wanted. If we shot this probably 10 years ago, then he would have been a shoe-in for Dr. Smith. But the pandemic hit, I had restrictions with senior actors, and he's really old na. So I don't think he can pull it off. So hindi na namin siya na-engage. Na but we did talk to him. Ang question ko ngayon, what's up with the bed scene? The, the bed scene, we felt, no, it was written by the, ano, because, you know, I know it's more PG naman yung, yung show, no? Uh, but we didn't show anything lewd. They were just together in bed because we wanted to show that their love, it, their love, at least in the eyes of Sandra, it's a consummate thing that they were in love with each other. But again, the scene revealed na parang, don't ask me to choose between you and the Empire. I will choose the Empire over you anytime, di ba? So, hurt si Sandra. But we wanted to show, kasi at the end, spoiler alert, uh, that Sandra sacrifices herself for for Zardos. We have to show that it's that level. Again, our market is not only kids, but you know the titos and titas of Manila. So we must have that adult level of of content. Even Michael B. B posted his opinions on the show, yeah. especially when it came out. So how did that feel for you? Na parang, uh, syempre, parang all praises, but he had little nitpicks. Well, pa rin, yeah. everyone would. I have. I know I critique my own work, you know, okay. but, but you know we we always strive for a hundred percent. But if it falls short, it becomes eighty or eighty-five or ninety. You know, you know, ano ko, we draw the line at to go to eighty-five. All right. You know, nothing lower. Of course, I would nitpick because it's because there's so many reasons. Eh. we couldn't get the right time for it. Na we're over budget for a certain thing. We don't have. We need to finish now. Those things are the reason why there are some pitfalls. I admit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this aired already. The, I wanted to do a more dramatic scene with the uh, the death of Mark's mom. Mm -hmm. Okay, I couldn't do too much because that was the middle of the pandemic. Of course, I cannot have uh, CGI wolves, uh, a real wolves attack her. Mm -hmm. But we could have staged that better. Uh, we could have provided more CGI work for that. But I just wanted to make it, you know, just deliver the message. But me two weeks ng 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 telenovela daw. Because we're doing a Filipino soap, we could not do anything shorter than that or else we will not reach the 80 episodes that is needed to produce the show. So we will fill in other stories. If you're just there to tune in for the Beast Fighter fights, then by all means do that. Just wait for the episode. But we want to run a story. And then um, people are reacting to it positively. You know, there are some people who don't want it, people who, who, who appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Like... It was two weeks of building up the relationship of the parent of, of Mary Ann and the boys. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to cry like the way you cried when she died if we just killed her in episode two and then there's no backstory, you never saw the relationship. So we built that up. Okay, well, given that, you know, people are asking, why is daily? I remember you mentioned before originally the plan was weekly. So how come... My it, plan was just a movie. And then GMA wanted, no, let's do a full-on... I know, see, okay. <laughs> Who am I to say no? So, pa paano siya naging daily? What, what decisions did you To afford the CGI that you're enjoying and all those sets and all those expensive whatever, we have to do it this much to get the return of investment of GMA. Simple as that. Simple math. From our friend Karen Kunawicz. Okay, so what goes into the mix of making Voltas 5? How much of this is your vision and as compared to what the fans want? Maybe the best way to answer that is... Uh, it was a Voltus 5 fan who made the show. So I considered a lot of those things when I was making it because I was a fan. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to sit down and watch it, I'd want to see all those. The voice commands, uh, those, uh, those little things that they were given assignments. I was looking at the project and, I, and, and I, I attacked it as a fan. So I'm sure that when people watch it, the fans watch it, they know that, oh, we were thinking of you. Call it fan service or not, but basically this i put ahead the uh, no, the the needs of a fan from russell yao of saber source any new weapons that this voltus 5 will be showing off ah uh, very i uh, know uh minimal we, we that's canon uh we can't do, do anything spectacular or something new unless it's approved by toei but we have to stick to what what's there from nestor domingo slick master's files okay if you can recall 
Can you cite one or few memorable moments on shooting Voltas 5 Legacy that really left a mark on your own legacy as the show director? The first time we lit up the uh, skull ship, that was the first set that we shot, and then the, the actors came in, in all, you know, in, in, in all full costume, and then we shot that iconic back shot of them looking lang, and the earth was there. That was very memorable to me. It gives me a thrill as a, as a fan and as, as a director. Parang wow, we're actually doing this in live animation. So following the success of Voltus 5 Legacy, are there any plans for the show thereafter, like either streaming platforms or collectible home media items, DVD, Blu-ray? It's right. coming, all those uh, merch, uh, the streaming versions. Uh, just watch out for it, but that's all coming. Atsushi Matsura, former guitarist of the Dawn. So, uh, why did they do a Japanese version of the theme song instead of having it translated into Filipino or English? Best, best question. It will look awkward and there is no nostalgia to it. Even if you do it in English, the nostalgia is in the Japanese theme song. It's been in the, in the Philippines from the 1970s all the way to the karaoke years, right. to political ads, to jingles. It's been there. Well, on a similar vein, may, may post na lumabas na ano, may ginawang meme na showing the photo of that, uh, of the screenshot of that bed scene. Tapos may shot ni, ng cartoon Zardos na nagagalit. Parang, ano to? Yeah. <laughs> the meme culture has, has helped in the, ano? The it helps and it's, it's both uh, constructive and degenerative, you know? So, you just have to pick your, you know, pick your poison, kumbaga. So what can we expect in this latter half? Oh, so many. Uh, well, we have the, the sad death of two major characters. We have a very original storyline that I don't know whether you will like it or not. The love story that people are so like, enraged about, chill people, uh, the, between Mark, Steve, and Jamie. Mm -hmm. So there's a love triangle. Uh, and then there's the spin flight technique. There's the downfall of Bozania. Uh, God is going to show up and something else. But we have a very big surprise at the end. So how does it feel to make a TV show that's in the can like way, way before everything? It, it's, it's, uh, there's less pressure because if you shoot air, like you shoot, you shoot today, you edit tonight, and you air tomorrow, or you air the same day, it's really stressful. And then the quality goes down though, you know. At least Dito, we have time to change, to adapt, to adjust. So it's the, it's the way it should be done. What are the future plans for TV shows like this? Since it's been announced that there's going to be a Daimos. Well, that's in the, it's been announced that, that I don't know whether they're pushing through with it uh, at this point. You know, again, it's beyond my pay grade. Am I part of it? I don't know. They might get another director. We really don't know. Uh, so, but, but at least we've set the standard. You know, and we can tell the whole world that it can be done by the Filipinos. So I guess that's the biggest take home that we have as a as a production that at any standard. Like like you know, when you expect my sangre production next year, the level of quality of the CGI and the sets would be this level now. We can't go down. I thought you know, GMA should realize that we GMA has realized that, you know, so we really put set the bar high. So we have to maintain that. Wait, wait. You mentioned sangre. Yeah. Yes. So What's it gonna be about? It's not a re, re, reboot or whatever, no? It is the continuing story of where we left off in 2016. It is now that we, in 2016, if you guys recall, we showed the, the children, the offsprings. So it, this is their story now. So we showed the, the, uh, no, the, uh, the, the next generation of Sangres. And then we have the old Sangres, because no one dies in Encantadia. So think of an end game type of situation that they're all together in one scene maybe the, the same sangres from from 2016 yes. are we talking about the og i don't know 2016 so yeah. sila kylie sila 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 sanya yeah mm. you that group that's our universe now if i do a flash point kind of thing i could bring in the original sangres of 2006 i'll be that will that will be an interesting thing to do but we will see how that plays out uh, thank you for watching uh, and uh, still watching, continue watching Voltus 5 Legacy. We did this for you, for the Filipinos. I know that the whole world is excited about it. Uh, you have to be proud of it. That is purely 100 Filipino made production. Uh, we, like we said, we GMA spent so much on it. Uh, and you see the product naman and then uh, hopefully you enjoy the whole run until uh, until episode 80, which is sometime in August. Thank you, Direct Mark, for, Thank you. for, 
for granting us this interview with you because we've been wanting to ask you so <laughs> many I know. things. It's, Time is, ano, baka maybe we can have a part two. So, as we go along. So, yes, yeah. especially maybe, closer to the end. Yes, yeah, maybe closer to the end. So, yeah. we can set up the finale very nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime. Alright, so there you have it, guys, on Nerd Rage. Direct Mark Reyes of Botus 5 Legacy. This is Adrian Arcega, that of the Geeks. And we'll see you guys. <laughs>